You're welcome back. Uh, we're, we're ready now to take uh, the headlines from uh, some of our national dailies. We have the Punch, the Guardian, and Nature News, or the Nation, and then Na Nature News this morning. We're beginning with the Guardian. But first of all, I'd like to introduce to you the guest for today. He's a legal practitioner and a regular face on the Breakfast uh, Show on PLUS TV. Mr. Tunde Kolawole, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're beginning with Punch newspaper and I'm going to take uh, all the headlines and then we pick one after the other. Um, the, the biggest headline there is that APC Lampoon's Atiku ex-VP set to submit documents in Supreme Court. That's on Tinubu's credentials. Uh, the writers are Atiku's journey to Chicago varsity, a fruitless exercise, ex-VP a loser, says APC. And President's documents released by Versity have vindicated us, PDP insists. Okay, we also have Minister Tinubu Peaks Balarabe to replace El Rufai. And um, uh, 100 billion naira CNG buses, Senate rejects CBN loans, warns Tinubu against illegal spending. 17 independent uh, discos get licenses, uh, 10 operational and 23 oil blocks failed to produce crude, as according to the federal government. We also have uh, Ondo Assembly asked CJ to raise impeachment panel. And um, unfortunately, 22 people drown as boat capsizes in Niger. Six bodies recovered already. Let's begin with Tinubu's credentials, the president's credential uh, that have been obtained by the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, who was the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Let's hear your thoughts on that. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay. You were saying we should begin with the, with the, the controversy surrounding the president's credentials. Yes, please. Yeah, and uh, I want to say that uh, I have read most of the things that were published with regards to that certificate uh, uh, issues. And I want to say that uh, the more I read, the more confused that I have personally become, it would appear the issue has taken a very, very serious uh, partition uh, uh, dimension, such that uh, you find that one sort of uh, Things have been published, either in the conventional media or in the social media. And in a area where uh, fake news is not too far from us, one is becoming difficult to distinguish which is uh, genuine and which is not a uh, factual. For example, you have mentioned this morning what the PDP has been saying, that they have been vindicated. You may also have read uh, what Professor Kiyama uh, said that Atiku's journey to the U.S. to begin to look for the president's credentials or certificates and all that has been a blatant waste of time for which Atiku and the PDP should uh, uh, apologize. Uh, given this, I would want to say, uh, okay, before I even uh, arrive at my, at my anchor, I have also read one, what one professor, uh, Perogi Farouk, who is a Nigerian uh, professor, resident in the U.S., have, um, have uh, published. So given, given all these issues and all that, I think it might be too hasty for us to jump into a conclusion or arrive at a conclusive end uh, that the accusation allegations against Mr. President uh, has been uh, proven. For example, the Chicago University itself has not been too helpful in this matter. They have sent the one breath that the certificate Mr. President is holding is genuine and that they issued it. In the other matters that I have read, they are also claiming that uh, what was submitted to INEC uh, was not what was issued uh, to Mr. President at that period in time. Of course, there's also the controversy that, you know, uh, that when the president was applying to the University of Chicago, some of the credentials that is submitted uh, bore a female uh, uh, description. 
and that uh, the government college Lagos, which he claimed to have attended and graduated in 1976, I mean in 1974, was actually established in, 19, um, in 1976. So given all these controversies and all that, I would want to say that uh, the scenario with regard to those credentials are still unfolding. That we might have to wait a little bit to really be able to get to the bottom of uh, uh, some of these uh, things. But let me quickly say that uh, no matter what the circumstances are, the controversy surrounding the certificate may not be sufficient to remove the president at the end of the day for so many reasons. One, uh, whatever article brings back from Chicago or from the US, it will still have to be registered with uh, the Supreme, I mean, with uh, the courts in Nigeria, which is the Supreme Court. You must register the decisions and judgments and all the documents that he got here in Nigeria for him to be able to use it in any Nigerian court. And uh, you will also agree with me that the case is not the, before the Supreme Court. And any case before the Supreme Court, in which you haven't tendered some document at the lower court, especially at the, the presidential election petition tribunal, which was first earlier and all that, you will have an audit of course with regard to tending those uh, documents. One is that uh, you have to seek leave of uh, the Supreme Court to be able to tender any of those documents. And the uh, leaves are never granted uh, a la carte. Uh, the Supreme Court will have to weigh so many things. They may have to, you have to hold them, you have to convince them on the necessity to bring in documents, exhibits that are not used at uh, uh, the lower court uh, to convince the Supreme Court before you can um, uh, tender it in there. They can decide in their wisdom because the Supreme Court is uh, a law to itself and say, look, we are not accepting this, we are not granting you leave to be able to tender uh, this. So the disposition of the panel uh, that is going to hear the presidential election at the Supreme Court will have a lot to do with uh, whether that document will eventually go in or it will not uh, go in. Secondly, when you look at Section 308 of the Nigerian Constitution, you will agree with me that uh, the president immediately became sworn in as uh, president. He began to be clothed with what I would describe as a suffering immunity uh, that you cannot try him on any criminal case or an uh, order. Uh, that provision of the constitution can still be invoked to shield the president from really um, uh, trying him or uh, uh, wanting to use that certificate to really be able to get the president removed from office. Let, let me Furthermore, let me the constitution let me also provides this. that. Uh, let me understand this, Tunde. Tunde, let me okay. understand this. Let me understand this. You said something okay. about, about immunity, and it just yeah. got me worried. So um, at this point where there's still litigation, there's still uh, cases in court, and uh, Nigerians are just looking and saying, is this our president or not? You're saying that immunity clause can be invoked in such a way that nothing can happen to the president who is sitting now. So what's the point of going to the court if uh, anybody who has been sworn in can invoke that uh, immunity clause and then get away with anything? Well, the law is announced. Uh, you hardly can decide or determine on what pendulum the decision of the courts, as well as the Supreme Court, will eventually uh, go. I'll give you one example. Look at the Rotimi Amechi's case. Imam Bulop, in Rotimi Amechi, when he first became governor in River State, he didn't contest that election. It was somebody else that ran for the elections and won the election. But uh, he got a very good lawyer who went to the Supreme Court, who went to the Court of Appeal and said, look, it is parties that uh, the electorate vote for are not individual. And then the Supreme Court had upheld that position and allowed uh, Rotimi Amechi to become the governor of um, the River State. When eventually uh, the Supreme Court were being queried, they said they took that decision in order to send the appropriate signal uh, to the Nigerian politicians 
not to begin to toy with our laws or to begin to manipulate the uh, election. What I'm trying to draw of this is that the, the disposition of the people who we hear the election petition at the Supreme Court will have a lot to do with regards to what eventually became of uh, that um, uh, decision that was taken in the, in the United States. Furthermore, you must remember that this is not the first time that this issue of this certificate controversy will be coming up. When Mr. President first became governor in Lagos State and all that, the issue was raised. Chief Ganifa and me, in fact, went to the court to, 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 to stop uh, the president. I mean, or to get the president, I mean, to get uh, the president removed as the governor of Lagos State. But the court, in his wisdom, overruled uh, Chief uh, Ganifa and me, and then uh, the president was able to continue as governor at that period in time. The Lagos Assembly also set up a panel uh, to look at that certificate issues. And the Lagos Assembly cleared clear the president at that period uh, in time. You must also remember that what the Constitution has provided for is that uh, you must have studied up to at least the equivalent of a secondary school level for you to be able to fight for the presidency, the governors, and some of these other elective uh, offices. If Mr. President has been governor, he has been senator, and also contested the, the presidential election and won. And he has worked, he has worked in Moby and Deloitte and accounting firm and all that. With what certificate did he work in those places? With what certificates uh, did he uh, um, uh, become a senator and what have you? So if you look at the preponderance of some of these things and all that, uh, you will want to conclude that uh, it is still money yet on creation day. And that it's going to be an Aquilian task for anybody to rely on whatever comes back from uh, the United States of America to remove the, Mr. President as the president of the, uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, or even for the Supreme Court to, up to upturn his uh, victory at the election petition uh, tribunal because under our law, there is the principle of estopen. There's also the principle that if a man has been tried for one particular offense or infraction, uh, he cannot be tried again, or that issue cannot be looked at again by the Nigerian court. So estopen and the constitutional provisions, section 177, 308 and order, will tend to favor Mr. President in this matter. You did say something about the River State election, and you said that the yes. judges, the judges that they said they wanted to send a good signal. They wanted to send a signal. I wonder yes. what signal this Supreme Court will send. But I'd, I'd like to just, on a lighter note, point out the fact that um, uh, from time to time we hear of lawyers who have practiced for 20 years and then they get caught. Uh, just discovering that they were not lawyers in the first place. But they succeeded. They went to the courts. They defended people. They won some cases. They lost some cases. But they were not caught. Uh, they were practicing lawyers. And doctors also do these kind of things. But that's not what I'm saying is happening right now. But just, just for um, a lighter mood. Okay, let's go to Ondo Assembly. It's still on the Punch newspaper. Ondo Assembly uh, insists or, or have instructed the CJ to set up an impeachment uh, panel. And it gets me worried when I hear things like this from states, on those states that are having a problem. Someone who hold the fort for like three months for a governor, he just came back and they say he's uh, doing, um, he's not loyal anymore. And then you go to a do state, it's the same thing happening, a new office for the deputy governor. The deputy governor had to go and apologize and say, I made a mistake. By thinking that he wanted to contest, it was a mistake. I don't know how that was. And there's a problem there. And so many other places we see this. So I'd like your comments. Ondo State has got, made this move because uh, the CJ has to raise this panel before they can do anything. Let me hear your comments on that. Well, uh I've also read that the deputy governor went to court, and I think it was honorable justice in which it has stopped the, the payment, the equipment procedure. I think there's a court order stopping the Ondosia Assembly from proceeding with the uh, impeachment uh, process. Well, the truth of the matter is that no matter how unpalatable a court decision is and order, 
it will remain a court decision until it is overturned by a higher court. So they will not say, ah, as we are very well uh, bound by the decision of honorable justice in which, which today is uh, the prevailing decision with regard to whether the deputy governor of Ondo State can be removed or not. But I've also read where the Ondo State Assembly are insisting that they are going to proceed with the impeachment uh, proceedings. And like you said, they have asked the, the chief judge of Ondo State to set up a panel to look at their complaint against the deputy governor and proceed with the impeachment uh, process. In my humble opinion, or if the chief judge were to be on the side of the law, he will not constitute the panel to impeach the deputy governor, knowing that there is a subsidy court order stopping the Odessa Assembly from proceeding with the impeachment uh, uh, processes. In fact, it amount to uh, uh, a disobedience of court order on the part of not just the Odessa Assembly, but on the, court, on the part of the chief judge to proceed ahead or to go ahead with the impeachment um, uh, process. Uh, but again, we must be careful. There have been instances in which, uh, even when there's a specific court of that, the chief judge will still proceed to constitute the impeachment uh, uh, process. This may happen in a situation where the chief judge was probably recommended of, uh, appointed the chief judge of, uh, of uh, the state. And now that we have also seen a situation in which the chief judge is free to construct an impeachment panel, such as happened in Kogi State, when the governor wanted to remove the deputy, and uh, the chief judge refused to constitute uh, an impeachment panel against uh, the deputy. Well, the bottom line for all of these things, in my humble opinion, is that uh, the governors are not showing the intolerance and all that. They have to show tolerance in order to preserve this uh, uh, democracy. The deputy governors don't hold their responsibilities, the duties of their office, and their lives to the whims and caprices of the governors. Why we all them and enjoy them, or why they don't expect them to be loyal to their principal, to the governor? It does not mean they become uh, total slaves to the governor. The deputy governors have a responsibility under the constitution, so also the governor. They are what I would describe as a kind of uh, Siamese twins, uh, because without the governor, uh, and without the deputy, the governor himself cannot be said uh, uh, to meet the constitutional requirement to continue to, not just to stay in office, but to even win elections in the first instance. So, it's by nature of our Nigerian politics, there are all sorts of abnormalities. We have their ugly heads in the arena of uh, politics. It is the chief judge of Ondo State that we should not be looking at whether he will stay with the law or it is his loyalty to the governor that will carry today. For Edo for, uh, State, I will just repeat what I said last week that uh, if when Governor Obaseki wanted to be governor and his own principal and friend and the godfather uh, then uh, he decided to frustrate or to stop him from becoming a governor and he was able to overcome all those of you, people cross capital or change his political party and eventually became a governor. On what moral ground is he now trying to stop his own deputy from uh, trying to realize his political ambition to become governor of uh, Edo State? It is the electorate, and there are so many parties in Nigeria that we should that should decide who eventually becomes governors, not just in Edo State but also Edo State, and not the governors, not the city governors, for God's sake. Hmm.
That makes me just wonder whether this is a democracy, because democracy is about the people's yes, choices yes. and all that. Well, leave that as it may. Let's move to the nation newspaper and see some yes. of the headlines. I will be very brief in uh, all of these. We have agreement with organized labor to cost federal government two trillion naira. Uh, that one is being uh, written there. That's the boldest headlines. But I'm interested in Senate bars new members from top positions. Um, we also have diphtheria, FCT, 18 states may bring back face masks and uh, other stories that may also have appeared on the Punch newspaper. But Senate bars new members from top positions. Uh, let's start with that. Well, I don't agree with that. Why I concede that experience is uh, a very good thing. It uh, exposes you or what you bring in from the experience you have had will help a great team in assisting you to discharge the responsibilities of uh, leadership of the National Assembly. But it's not uh, sacrosanct. It is not something that somebody cannot learn within a short period of, uh, of a time. After all, nobody is born speaker of the uh, House of Representatives or the Senate uh, President. So, when the National Assembly begins to erect orders against new members who are coming to the National Assembly, I don't think that is the best approach uh, uh, to, to give it. Uh, whoever is, has the ambition to become leaders in the National Assembly, having been duly elected, there should be no reason why such persons should not uh, uh, aspire. Uh, after all, it is the brain capacity uh, health-wise, and the uh, ability to learn and carry people along that should really matter, and not the donkey years of experience that you have accumulated over time. As people will say, uh, the age of Methuselah is not synonymous with the wisdom or effectiveness in the discharge of, uh, in the discharge of responsibilities of, uh, of a life. Mm. Okay, um, so agreement with uh, organized labor to cost federal government two trillion naira. And in that story, the writer is that, um, let me wear my glasses, uh, 89,100 workers likely to miss 35,000 naira wage award. And there's also how VAT or value added tax uh, cut on diesel will affect the economy. So let's look at uh, this uh, money that it, that it will cost the federal government because of the agreements reached by the mm. labor. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, very, very complex situation that we have in our hands as a people. Why one agrees that uh, even if the labor people, the workers in Nigeria today, I pay 100,000 minimum wage. It will not still be enough to really take them home, considering the high inflation that we presently have in the country, uh, considering the number of dependents that most people who are working in Nigeria have had to cater uh, uh, for, and all that. Uh, furthermore, we want to ask, where will the government get money to be able to pay these promises that it's uh, uh, the promising the workers. The oil that we depend on, the money economy that has continued to sustain us, has become highly volatile. It is no longer reliable. The prices of uh, petroleum products around the world or in the world market fluctuates on a daily basis. If by chance there is a crash, in the oil revenue that we are getting, where will government be able to raise the necessary funds to be able to pay the workers what it's promising them? Are we going to go back to the regime of merely printing the naira and the spending the oil using to pay salary? Are we going to again go back to the era of going around the whole places, around the world, internally and externally, to borrow money to pay salaries? Then Thirdly, paying workers the kind of money that the government is promising them 
is it not likely to fuel the inflation that we already have in our country? Furthermore, when you look at the percentage of the federal worker, the percentage of uh, state worker, the percentage of local government worker, there are no significant percentage of the nation's uh, population. Are we going to go back to the era with a large chunk of the nation's resources will be used to pay worker salaries and then the rest used to sustain the profligacy of the Nigerian politicians? Honestly speaking, uh, the approach that we are given, the challenges that we have in the areas of economy, in the areas of politics, and in meeting or helping the workers to be able to live a comfortable life may at the end of the day not serve the intended purpose. Recollect that it was when the, the government of the Yakubu government said the nation had too much money with which he doesn't know what to do with it, decided to pay what was called back then, the Udoji uh, salary uh, uh, packages, that inflation began to skyrocket in the country. And then most Nigerian workers began to embark on a uh, life of concentration, life that cannot be sustained, or life that is not based on any productive base of the Nigerian economy. Isn't that another we are going back to? Are we not going to start following a situation in which people will begin to consume what they have not uh, produced? Well, honestly, I also look at the situation in which the government say, look, we will uh, subsidize gas, we will uh, provide mass transit buses and all that. When you look at all over the country today, the gas regime, electric cars, to power most of the public transportation and all that has never worked. In fact, mass transportation has never worked in Nigeria. And we have been trying it over a long period of time. It is not working for so many reasons. One, our roads are not built to accommodate the jumbo buses that are always used for mass transit. The railway system, too, hasn't quite gotten off the ground. And the if it gets off the ground, and it's not going to make much difference. But they said that what we are investing on is still the locomotive railway. When around the world today, it is good at trade that people are building, such as the digital people now tell, now have. I would want to advise that both the government and labor require to really sit down and put on uh, some thinking caps and then uh, navigate the landmines that uh, we have made for ourselves as a nation, especially in the areas of economics. Mm. Mm. Okay, on the Guardian, Guardian newspaper now, we, the, the headline is Hurdles for Federal Government 2024 Budget Over 10 Trillion Naira Deficit and Palliatives. Was it? Did you, mm. get, did you get that? I did, that uh, there might be deficit of up to 10 trillion on the budget for 2024. Yeah. So, what is the meaning of a deficit? Deficit is ways and means of races for which you spend. And what is ways and means? It is merely printing money and spending it. Money that are not based on any productive activities of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the country. And of course, when you merely print money and you begin to spend it, you are falling inflation. And they're also making international businessmen and other countries to begin to have a lack of confidence in your economy, in your currency, and whatever activity that is taking place within the borders of your country. And once investors' confidence is lost, because they are using ways and means to, to power our economy, then you should not be expecting any investment to come from overseas into Nigeria within in the foreseeable future. Hmm. Okay, let's take an, a final um, headline. It's from Nature News. And uh, the, the headline there is, Uncovered Manholes, Nigeria's Lament, Threat to Lives and Properties. 
Okay, so authorities issues 10 warning against manhole theft. It's becoming an issue, not just manhole. Sometimes uh, there are places that are covered, there are gutters that are covered so that vehicles can pass into a street. And you wake up in the morning, you don't find those things anymore, even when you have CCTV cameras in some places and all that. I, I wonder what is happening and I wonder what can be done to correct that. Manholes are increasingly becoming empty or uncovered. Not that they were not covered, but now we are losing uh, the lead to all manholes in Lagos, especially. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, we are a very strong and very peculiar people. The way the facilities are provided for our own comfort, we also go ahead and violate those. I mean, and then um, uh, vandalize those infrastructure for service reasons and for peculiar penalty. This is not just a manual. Most of the railings of bridges that have been provided have all been vandalized and stolen. And then those things, then they are cleaning, they are melted. I think we have seen more of manholes all over the world and in some other parts of Nigeria simply because iron, iron has become very expensive. A little gram of it, you take to the market. You sell and make uh, a lot of money. And because of that reason, a lot of people are, are removing all this money and selling them to those who make this iron and use it to manufacture iron rod and some other iron uh, uh, materials uh, and whatever. Uh, let's, remind, let's remind those who are engaged in some of these things that there is a law, very serious uh, law. We decided to receive a punishment for those who vandalize public properties, such as the covers of manhole, such as railings of bridges, and some of these other infrastructures that have been provided for citizens to come for. You will not believe me. One brilliant young man, some years ago, lost his life in the Bagada area of the neighbors. He was uh, coming from the people of Lagos Island. When he suddenly ran uh, into a manhole that has been created because the water has been removed by certain uh, persons and water. Very brilliant young man, he lost his life needlessly because of the vandalization of uh, the road in that area of uh, Lagos State. Well, I think what we should continue to do is to be educating the Nigerian people on radio on television, just as we are doing now, in newspaper, and through public announcement, and also by the National Radiation Agency. And the need for citizens not to begin to vandalize public properties. And then again, the too, the security people will be conducting discrete investigation to know where these things are sold, when they are being removed from where they are placed. After all, those who remove them, and if they have no market to sell them, they will be discouraged from removing those, um, from those things. Mm. Very true. I do hope that um, uh, people or citizens will take the responsibility of policing these things because I saw a video the other day uh, where uh, the people we properly call Iron Condemn were removing uh, these, these things from, from the road. Uh, there, is, there, there are covers to gutters where vehicles pass onto the street and these ions are very, very heavy and so I'm sure that they will cost a lot of money selling them. But they were removing them. They removed up to mm -hmm. like uh, three or four of them and somebody was making a video and couldn't shout and say, we are seeing you or something to make these people run away. So as I say, uh, the iron condemn as we call them, uh, some of them are perpetrating this kind of things. Uh, crime uh, and criminality everywhere. We, I also blame the people who see these things being done and say nothing about them. They, they don't report them, they don't, they don't shoo them off, they don't say anything and these things keep happening. I think it's our collective responsibility. But for right now, uh, I'd like to just thank you to Nde Kolawole for coming on the show this morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I would like to wish you a very good day.
Thank you very much. You too. Thank you. Okay, Tunde Kalawale is a legal practitioner here in Lagos State and he was talking with us on the segment we call Off the Press. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs>